Hi everyone, Jason from Makeara here with another project tutorial. And in this one, we're looking at how to create a simple printed circuit board or PCB using the Carvera and Makeara Cam. Both the Carvera and Carvera era desktop CNCs can be used to machine simple and complex printed circuit boards thanks to their high precision, auto calibration features, and laser engraving modules. Makeara Cam can also be used to easily import PCB Gerber files and prepare them for manufacturing, allowing you to make a wide range of electronics projects. Now in this tutorial, we're gonna make the sample LED PCB board from the LED sign project included in the Carvera examples guidebook. You can download the Gerber file for this PCB from the knowledge sharing page on our wiki site, or you can access the pre-prepared G-code files for the LED sign project in the examples folder on every Carvera. There are also several ways to make a PCB, whether it be simple and unmasked, solder masked, or solder masked with an engraved silkscreen layer. And in this tutorial, we're gonna look at how the same PCB file can be manufactured in any of these options. So let's get started. So after launching Makeara Cam, the first thing we want to do whenever starting a new project is set up our stock parameters. So we can hit this edit button to choose PCB as our material. This will automatically select our speeds and feeds when using the appropriate tools, which we'll see later. We can also adjust the size to match the size blank that we're using for our PCB, which typically is 150 millimeters in length, 100 millimeters in width, and 1.5 millimeters in height. Next, we can move into importing our PCB Gerber files. You need to first unzip your Gerber file if you're using an exported Gerber file, and then use the import PCB button to select your file. It's also best to import all aspects of your PCB at the same time, and then remove what you don't need. The reason we do this is so that way all aspects of your PCB file are aligned with one another as they were when the file was first exported. You can always move things after the fact, so I can select any part of my design and use the transform tools to reposition this on my stock if I'd like. Or if I were to import something separately like these holes and needed to align it to something that's already been repositioned, I can always use the center to center feature where I select a reference, like for example, one hole, and then select where that actually should align to my PCB design. That will reposition our design with our file even after things have been moved. Something else you may wanna consider, though it's not necessary for this project, is adding another work coordinate system. The default work coordinate system is aligned to the top left corner to machine on the top of our stock, which in this case would be the copper PCB. If I was making a two-sided PCB, I may add a second work coordinate system and then choose to align the second work coordinate system to the bottom left corner of our stock, which would allow me to flip the material over to make a two-sided PCB as discussed in our other videos. Also, depending on how your PCB was designed and exported, you may need to select your design and mirror it so that way the correct part of the design is facing the correct aspect of your PCB board. With our design imported, we can start to work with our file. Now, as discussed in our working with PCB video, it's important that you export your line widths, which helps with our nesting features in Makeara Cam. When you export your line widths, you will find that your outer line is usually a double line, where the inner part of this is used to machine your pockets and your traces, and the outer part is used to actually cut the contour. This can sometimes make selecting your PCB a little bit difficult to do. What we recommend is that you cut and move the outline to its own unique layer. I'm gonna do this by selecting the cut tool, then making sure that layer one is active, a layer that I haven't used yet, and even rename this to be contour, then pasting the line onto the contour. I can then use the center to center feature to reposition this and make sure that it lines up with my PCB as desired. The next thing we're gonna create are our traces, and we're gonna do this for whichever style PCB we plan to make, whether it's copper only, solder mast, or solder mast with a silk screen. I'm gonna hide all of my layers and then select just the ones needed to create the traces, which would be the bottom art layer and the outline layer, again, making sure that the outline is now just a single outline because I've moved the second outline to its own independent layer, which we don't need just yet. I can then select all of these graphics by highlighting them like this, or by actually selecting the layers on the side and choosing to select all graphics. We can then create a vector pocket toolpath. A typical end depth for creating traces with copper PCBs is 0.05 millimeters. You also typically don't need to adjust your safe positions unless you are moving around certain clamps and fixtures that you have. As for our bits, we can choose from a range of single flute metal engraving bits 
The smallest that you would typically use is 0.1 millimeters at a 60 degree angle or 0.2 millimeters at a 30 degree angle. You can also use corn bits to create your traces depending on the size of your line widths. I'm going to select the 0.2 millimeter by 30 degree bit and because I've already selected PCB material as my stock, the feeds and speeds and default parameters are set to match my PCB stock. Offset is the correct path strategy unless we were trying to clear a large amount of area, perhaps making an inverted PCB for example. And I can calculate this to see my trace paths. It's also important to make sure that the tool number corresponds to either the order that you're going to use this tool. If for example you're using the Carvera Air where you load the tools manually in order from operation, or it corresponds to the position that this tool is loaded in the Carvera's automatic tool changer if that's the machine that you're working with. The next thing that we're going to create are our holes. I'm going to hide this pocket path and I'm also going to hide the traces as I won't need them for this. I have several hole layers and there are several different hole sizes. You can choose to create holes using a drilling operation where you use a different drill bit depending on the size hole you need. So for example, a 0.8 millimeter drill bit for 0.8 millimeter holes, a one millimeter drill bit for one millimeter holes and so on or you can choose to use a corn bit and create a pocket operation to clear the hole, which works really well when you have a lot of different hole sizes. I'm gonna select my two smallest collections of holes by choosing those layers in the layer panel and selecting the graphics on those layers. For these smaller holes, I am going to use a drilling operation. So I'm going to create a vector drilling operation. My drill tip end depth is gonna be past the depth of my material. So instead of 1.5 millimeters, I'll go 1.8 millimeters. And again, I don't really need to adjust my safe positions unless there was something I was working around. For this, I'm gonna select from my drill tools and I'm gonna select a 0.8 millimeter drill with the PCB feeds and speeds. And again, make sure that the tool number either corresponds with the order or where it's loaded in my Carvera's tool changer. You do wanna create a retract or a PEC drilling operation. So that way you do not plunge all the way through your material. I find that a relative retract distance works really well, and you could even choose to reduce your step down if you want to drill more gradually, which is helpful when you're working with a very small drill bit such as this. After pressing calculate, I can see that the 0.8 millimeter holes have been created with this drilling operation. Now I have three other hole sizes, so I could choose to use other drill bits to create these, or I can choose to use a corn bit to make these larger holes. I'm going to select these three layers and then select the graphics on those layers, and instead of creating a drilling operation, we're gonna create a pocket operation and create these holes with a corn bit. I'm gonna change my end depth to be 1.8 millimeters so that this pocket passes all the way through my material. I'm then gonna change my tool and instead select a smaller corn bit. The corn bit will go into this hole and move around to create this pocket through a clearing operation. The default feeds and speed should be fine, though if you're working with a smaller corn bit, it's always a good idea to reduce your step over and your step down to make sure that you can cut something more precisely and reduce the likelihood of breaking your bit. Again, this is a different tool, so we need to have a different tool number, and I can calculate this path. Here we can see that the smaller holes are being cleared rather quickly with a single movement, and the larger holes have several movements to clear, but this one bit can be used to clear my remaining holes. I'm gonna now hide my hole layers, because we don't need them, and I'm gonna hide my paths to get them out of the way. The next part of the PCB is actually cutting it. So we're gonna enable that contour layer we created earlier, and we're gonna cut this PCB out of the stock. After selecting the outline, I can create a vector contour toolpath. Now we want our end depth to be past the PCB thickness, so 1.8 millimeters should work well. Again, you could adjust your safe positions as needed, and we can choose our tool. Typically, we would use a corn bit to cut out a PCB, and I'm going to again select the 0.8 millimeter corn bit that I used earlier to create my whole operations. Our feeds and speeds are set to match our PCB, and we can choose how we'd like to cut this. You would typically create a path strategy of an outside cut. This will allow the bit to travel along the outside of your PCB, making sure that the PCB size is retained, rather than cutting on the inside, which would remove material from the PCB, or cutting on vector. If you wanted to, you can also offset, which would create a larger perimeter around your PCB as needed. And I always like to use ramping when using smaller corn bits. A ramping distance of 10 millimeters and a 15 degree angle will allow our bit to enter the material more gradually, which reduces the wear and likelihood of breaking. In terms of tabs, you have a couple options. If you wanted to, you could create tabs along the perimeter of your PCB, which would hold it in place during machining, 
Another strategy, and what I like to do, is use double-sided tape on the bottom of our PCB to hold it in place. After pressing calculate, I can see this vector contour toolpath. I'm now going to hide this layer and instead enable all of my path layers. And here we can see the paths that are created to manufacture this PCB. If you're going to create a simple copper PCB, you would want to export all of these paths together. So for example, right clicking our path and saving all of our tool paths and then exporting this to create our copper PCB. Your CNC would then progress through machining your traces, drilling and creating your holes, and then creating your contour cut to finish this PCB. But if you want to create a solder mast PCB, we need to actually mask the PCB in between the manufacturing process. To do this, we would have to manufacture our pads where we can solder to, as well as create our holes and our contour cuts. So looking back at our file here, we have one more thing we need to add if we want to create a solder mast PCB, and that is actually machining the pads that we'll remove after masking the PCB. To do this, we need to enable one of the solder layers. We can then select the graphics on this layer and these would be our solder pads. We're then gonna create a vector pocket toolpath and set our end depth to be 0.2 millimeters. Again, we don't necessarily need to adjust our safe positions, but we do wanna select a different tool. Under the solder mask category, we can select the solder mask removal tool, which is a V-bit designed specifically for removing solder mask. The default speeds and feeds should work fine as will the default path strategies. We can then calculate this pocket and now we have our solder mask. We wanna change where this operation happens. So I'm going to move this path so it happens after creating our traces. We could then export this project differently if we are gonna create a solder mask PCB. To do that, I would first export just the trace file on its own and then cut the traces on the copper PCB. After masking the PCB, we can then create the pads, drilling, and contour operations. For this, I can select those operations and export them together for a second file. We'll talk more about loading the file and setting up your parameters later when we get into making this PCB in this tutorial. Something else you might want to consider if you are creating a solder mask PCB is using the laser engraving module to laser engrave the silkscreen layer. To do that, we need to create one more toolpath. I'm going to enable the silk screen layer and then select those graphics on the silk top layer. We're then gonna create a laser vector operation. Here, I can set the default speeds to be 100 and default power to be 20 if I'm engraving a light solder mask, such as white, or 30 if I'm engraving a darker solder mask. We want the mode to be fill, so that way all of these graphics will be filled, although you could choose to only do outlines, but that would only work well if your line thicknesses are larger. If you wanted to, you could also adjust the resolution or your scan angle as needed, and then we can calculate this toolpath. We can then export this toolpath independently as this would happen in a third process, meaning that if we were gonna create a solder mask PCB with a laser engraved silkscreen layer, I would first run the copper traces only, then coat the PCB with the solder mask, then run the solder mask operations, such as the pads, holes, and contour, and then mask the PCB one more time with the UV solder mask with the laser. So looking at this CAM file here, hopefully it's clear that there's a lot of different ways that you can set up and process your PCB. The simplest method is to create a file that includes your traces, your holes, and your contour cut, and that can be machined in a single job on a copper PCB. The next level of complexity would first be machine your trace files, then machine your pads, your holes, and your contour after a PCB was solder masked. And the third method is to then go in and create another solder mask layer that is laser engraved to create a silkscreen layer on your PCB. For all of these, it's best to import the entirety of your PCB and then work with what you need. And remember that you can export your paths in individual files as needed depending on the steps taken to create your PCB project. For whichever way you chose to prepare your G-code file for manufacturing your PCB, preparing our CNC for manufacturing is the same. We can fix blank PCB stock to the bed of our CNC using corner clamps and top clamps, as well as two-sided tape to secure the stock to a piece of wasteboard that's fixed to our bed. The dust chute and vacuum typically isn't used for PCBs, and we need to load the tools in the correct order based on our CAM file if we're using the Carvera with an automatic tool changer. And of course, whenever using the laser module, it's important to remember to remove the laser lens cover when in use and ensure that you're engraving in a well-ventilated area and with protective eyewear.
Once your machine has been prepared, we can open the G-code files from the CareCam in the Carvera controller app. From the Carvera controller app, we can open the config and run window to configure our G-code files for manufacturing. In addition to using scan margin, which traces the perimeter of our design, and auto Z probe, which measures the thickness of our stock automatically, we also typically use auto leveling with PCBs. This is because the PCB stock isn't always perfectly flat. Sometimes this material warps, sometimes it's not perfectly fixed flat on your bed. So using auto leveling with PCBs allows us to ensure we machine evenly across the stock, even if the stock isn't perfectly flat or if it is slightly warped. And if you're creating a multi-file project like a masked PCB, you do not need to use Z-Probe or auto leveling for the second or third file, only the first. This is because the height and positions will be retained between your different G-code files and jobs as long as the machine isn't reset. And when making mass PCBs, it's always a good idea to lightly sand or scuff the surface of your PCB before applying your solder mask for better adhesion. In between putting light coats of solder mask on, you have to remember to cure the solder mask using the UV lamp unless you are creating an engraved solder mask. In that case, the laser module will cure the mask for you on your silkscreen layer and you can wipe away excess mask using isopropyl alcohol wipes as we discussed in our other tutorial videos. So whether it be simple copper PCBs or more complex and professional mask and engraved PCBs, the Carvera and Carvera Air are ready for the job. You can check out the LED light tutorial on our channel and wiki page for soldering and assembly instructions for this PCB project. You can also find introductory tutorials and guides on how to mask PCBs and what the PCB fabrication pack does. And of course, you can find other tutorials to see how a more complex two-sided PCB can be made using similar techniques to the ones introduced here. And as always, please don't forget to subscribe and thanks for watching.